Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Right? Do you know what you're saying when you say that? What does the word Hosanna mean? Anyone? Anyone? Say louder. God saves or save us or save ho or save now. Yasha. Hasa is the is the it's a Hebrew word um, that means save, save us. So what those people were shouting as Jesus was going by them, save us, O Son of David. Why were they asking Jesus to save them, and why are we carrying these things around? What is this? For those of you that aren't normally here, this is a participatory time. If you don't speak, it's going to be very long. (laughs) It's a palm. Yes, it's a palm frond or a palm branch or a palm something, right? Where, Where in our reading this morning did you hear palms? Did you hear anything about palms this morning in the reading from Matthew? Jesus was riding a donkey, but what about palm branches? They were? Read, look at Matthew again. They cut branches from the trees. Does it say they were palm trees? Maybe they were oak trees. Jesus had to watch out. They were swinging these big... Maybe not. Mark talks about leaves of the field. Matthew says they threw their cloaks down and cut branches off the trees. Luke doesn't say anything about any kind of green stuff at all. The only gospel that says anything about palms is John. So why are we making, when the, when the gospel itself, when the Bible itself doesn't make a big deal about these silly little green things, why do we make such a big deal every year in church about waving around our palms and making sure that we celebrate Palm Sunday when it's not really about the palm at all. Where does the palm even come from? It probably comes from from an understanding that, that we get out of Maccabees, first or second Maccabees, where it talks about the waving of palm branches with with the with God heralding and leading his people into the city of Jerusalem or heralding and leading his people into restoration of the temple. It talks about palm leaves or palm branches in Maccabees, which is a book that's not even in most of your Bibles. Your Bibles would probably go, I don't know what you're talking about when you say the book of Maccabees. But trust me, there is a first and second Maccabees. You can find it online. I have a Bible you can borrow if you want to read them. They're excellent books. But these entrances that are talking about in Maccabees are military victories. And those who saw Jesus enter the city this morning on the back of a donkey with the the answering of the prophecy from Zechariah, right? And Matthew is the only one that brings in the whole prophecy that Jesus will ride on the back of a donkey and on her colt. Now, I really would have liked to have seen that. Right? To see Jesus ride on two animals at once? Would it be possible? Do you think? Are you awake? (laughs) Rough crowd this morning, I tell you. Right, Jesus rides in, and these people see this. They know the prophecy from Zechariah. They know the readings from 1st and 2nd Maccabees. So, and they're shouting, Save us, son of David. Remember, the Romans have occupation of the city of Jerusalem at this point in time. These people are thinking Jesus is going to come in and be their king and lead them to an unoccupied Jerusalem. Is that what Jesus does? Jesus is their king, but not in the way that they expect him to be. Not in the way that they may want him to be. Not in the way that we always want him to be, right? So Jesus enters the city, but before he enters the city, he asks his disciples to go into a neighboring village and do what? Get 
a donkey and her colt. They will be tied there, and you just untie them and bring them here. And if anybody stops you, just tell them that I need them. That's the, the modern day example of that is Jesus says to his disciples, go into that next town over there and there'll be a car there with the keys in it. And I want you to go and get in it and start to drive away. And if anybody says anything to you, say Jesus needs it. Right. What's going to happen if you do that? You're going to get shot or the police are going to get called. Right. It's not going to go so smoothly. But these, these people just say, oh, okay, just take them then. So what is it that you need this morning? Do you need Jesus to be a superman? Someone who's going to save us from all of our troubles that's never going to die? Because that's what the American idolization of, of Christ is. A superhero. A person that swoops in at the last minute and saves us from our trials and never would do anything stupid like going to a cross and dying. Is that what we need? What do we need to make our lives complete? What do we need to get us to the next day? We have an answer. You have an answer? What do you need? Life? You need life to get to tomorrow. That's definitely true. We got another. Oh, I got another answer too. Our first communion kids are like popping up today. Love. Ooh. Ooh. Hold on to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Hope. I like that. Hold on to that. We'll get to that in a minute. Or to quote the movie Bolt, let's stick a pin in that and we'll come back to it. All right. I ask you what you need this morning because it's something that we all think about, right? Because there's things that we want, but what do we actually need? And the reason I ask you this morning what it is that you need, because it says, Jesus said to the disciples, go into that village up there and untie that donkey and her colt and bring, her, bring them to me. And if anybody says anything to you, tell them the Lord has need of them. Do you realize there is only one thing? In all of the Gospels, in all of the Bible, that it ever says that Jesus needs one thing. All of the time that Jesus is here and all of the stuff that he does for all the people that he sees and for all the people that come after them. He only ever needs one thing. And he needs a donkey. Kind of puts what we need into perspective, doesn't it? Jesus needed a donkey. But as I thought about this this week, I think Jesus actually needed two things. The only thing it ever says in all of the gospel that Jesus needed is a donkey. To be able to fulfill the prophecy from Zechariah. To ride into the city. To enter Jerusalem. To be shouted at as the king. Because this was a prophecy that was needing to be fulfilled. So Jesus fulfills it by asking his disciples to go and get a donkey and bring it to him. But not only that, Jesus needed to enter Jerusalem. And why does Jesus need to enter Jerusalem? You'd think he'd want to stay away because Jesus knows what's going to happen. Right? Jesus was a troublemaker. Do you ever think you'd hear your pastor say that? He stirred up trouble because he was trying to get people to understand that your religion is not what you need to follow. You need to follow God. Because if you're following after the rules and you're following after what people are telling you to do, you're not doing it right. You need to love your neighbor as yourself and you need to live the way that God called you to live. Not worrying about what the rules say, but being who God has called you to be in the world. And that was a troublemaker to those who were in power in the church in that day. And they didn't like it. And you know what? Jesus is still a troublemaker today because none of us want to give up our comfortable lives. None of us want to give up the way that we think about how our lives should be. None of us want to take what Christ is saying in front of us and is the best life that we could ever possibly have. But we don't want to go that way because it's different than what we want over here. Jesus still stirs up the trouble in us. But Jesus had to get that donkey. And Jesus had to ride into Jerusalem because Jesus had to go to the Last Supper. He had to go to the cross. Because he had to pour out his love 
She's not even paying attention to me. Love. He had to pour his love out over all of creation to give us hope for tomorrow. Jesus needed to do that. And if you were the only person here, he still would have needed to do that. Because that's how much God loves us. And as we enter this week to go through and follow our Lord on the track that he took through the celebration of the Last Supper, eating that meal with his friends, to going to the garden, to being arrested, to being put on trial, mocked, bruised, whipped, beaten to the point of death, and then nailed to a cross for you. To see it through to the other side. That's what this week is about. That's what we need to understand about what we need. And not worry about palms like this, but worry about these palms and how these palms are being used by God and how we're being called to go out into the world. So look to the cross and know that Jesus went there for you. And remember what he did and choose the life that he's sitting in front of you, because that's the best life that you could ever have. And then go into the world and take your palms, not these things, but these things. And use them to show everyone else exactly how much God loves them.